Okay, we've got an issue that it appears that it's gone down just a little bit because that was above that triangle, the brake fluid level. And we did put in a new clutch master cylinder, which is fed by the same reservoir, and I swapped the brake cylinder. So what we're going to do is look at the uh, look. We've we've replaced all four uh, brake positions, the hydraulic components. So we're going to look at the uh, clutch slave cylinder and see what that shows us. But we'll have to elevate the rear wheels of the Vanagon. something to lie on. Slight oil leak there. Hmm. Okay. Uh, the clutch cylinder. Where is the clutch cylinder? Will be on the other side. Ah. Sit right there. Does look like there's some leakage. Okay. So I guess we gotta change that one too. Alright. I think those are 13 or 14 millimeter. So I need a 13 millimeter or 14 millimeter socket and wrench. And maybe a plug, rubber plug in case uh, fluid comes out of there. Fortunately, it was kind of a mess. You have to take out this rod out of there because those nuts are frozen. You cannot get them off. I have to grind them off and replace them. Uh, so there's a line here, which is right there. You have to take that off. 
then of course fluid goes everywhere and you must have a something to block the uh, fluid falling down or it turns into a total mess which is what happened here we've got just a lot of brake fluid everywhere so probably have to figure out now how to grind those bolts off it's the only way to do it okay it's bright and sunny compared to last night but the uh, bolts are impossible to get out they're totally frozen I tried uh, grinding down a socket to make the uh, purchase on the bolt head better but it still didn't work so I could try to grind it off but first I think what we're going to do is uh, use the welder to tack the bolt and then get the nut off because you can't hold to it once it's too high up and uncomfortable. The only way to manage to get that to work was to weld that bolt head and then use a wrench. It is really, really tight and there was no way you could reach up so far in there with so little room and not have it slip off the socket. Okay, this continues to be rather a tough go. That bolt, that nut is hard to get to. It's behind there. And it's difficult on the top too. Um, have to see what we can do. It's a tough, it's tough. Try to use the air hammer on that bolt. Nah. So far, no go. Hammering, hacking, welding, grinding, nothing works. It's horrible. Hours and hours just to get one bolt. Well, it was hours for the first one, and now it's even more hours for the second one. Ridiculous. It finally came out. Somewhat the worse for wear. Okay, I'm gonna go get some new uh, grade 8 bolts. I'm gonna replace the metric with a size that'll fit that's uh, SAE. Off to Welco. I used a cutoff wheel. Had a bit of a disaster with the shattered plastic bottle from Harbor Freight of uh, compressor tool oil. Terrible. Cheap plastic. It's fragile and it hardens and cracks. Anyway. So what I did was use the cutoff wheel to put an access hole for the 
other bolt, which was so hard to get to. Okay, that's how it's going to go in. I took the rubber boot and plunger off to get it that way. And you can see it was possible to access the hole with uh, something like that. A couple of projects on the go here. Let's get some thread locker going here. Okay, there's the bolt up there. And what you want to do is put that with its washer up there first. Then you can put that in like that, as you can see. Makes it much easier. It's almost impossible to get out once the after years of uh, that being in there. Very awkward. However, this should work fine. Okay. Next is this uh, brace. goes up there and then so I'll put that on next So apply the thread locker blue to both. As you can see, you can easily put this in now. Much better. So I advise anyone doing this job to uh, make that modification. Otherwise, it's almost impossible when those bolts freeze up. Now, I probably won't ever have to do this again in my lifetime, but uh, it did make installation much easier as well. Anyhow, I, I used uh, 5 16 fine thread SAE bolts and nuts uh, that have like a similar half inch or 13 millimeter head as the originals. Okay, that looks very good. It's all tight now. Okay, so I inserted the tube in there. And I'll go to the next thing. Okay, I'm removing So I can get the connector on for the other end. Can't do this with one hand, so I'll be back in a sec. Okay, I've tightened the line up and inserted the bolts. So Put some white grease on both ends that go into there. Okay, they're tightened up and everything's in place. Now we'll just have to bleed it. The uh, That's a 19 millimeter nut there. And that's a 12 millimeter on the other side. BW says to only pressure bleed this, but I'm going to 
Try it with someone depressing the clutch. Okay, they say to use a pressure bleeder, but what I did was, with somebody stepping on the clutch, hold it down, have them uh, press down and hold it, then release the bleeder screw, let the air bubbles out, and then tighten it, and let them have the uh, clutch lifted up, and then let's, and now that it's tight, have them press down again and then loosen it till the fluid comes out with bubbles. Now they say you have to pressure bleed, but what I did was to give an assist, I pulled down on the vice grip attached to the the clutch shift arm uh, clutch shift arm at the same time that they pressed the clutch down, which gave a, a boost to the uh, the pressure going down and allowing the cylinder to fill. So that, that worked out better. Okay, so now we're just going to test it out and see what happens.